Tens of thousands of people each year join and participate in active cult groups throughout the world, some gaining notoriety, which has cast a shadow over all cults and arouses much suspicion by the general population. A large portion of these cults are harmless, but, as with anything, there are a few bad apples that harbour some pretty dark secrets. This story begins in Nenep. It's a secluded town nestled amongst farmland, state forests, and surrounded by other small communities in the lower left corner of Western Australia. In this sleepy town, you would have been hell-bent to find much of an interesting story that came from the community of 500 people. That is, until July 2007, when a couple, their daughter, and close friend vanished with little trace. On the surface, the four seemed like any other group. Simon Cadwell, Chantelle McDougall, and their daughter, Leela, lived quietly and remotely in a rental home on a cattle farm just outside Nanup. Tony Popick lived in his caravan in the backyard. Chantelle worked as a part-time barmaid, swimming instructor, and she also worked at a fish and chip shop. Simon was British, and Tony was a reserved man from the country who worked at a hardware store and was close friends with the others. Nothing unusual, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing sinister. That is, until you dig a little deeper and find evidence of cult activity, false identity, and even rumour of a suicide pact. In the months leading to July 2007, Simon Cadwell, Chantelle McDougall, their daughter, Lula, and friend Tony Popic decided to go on an extended holiday to Brazil to live in a commune near the Amazon jungle and perform some kind of charitable aid there. At least, they told Chantel's mother, Cathy McDougall, as much. On July 13, 2007, Chantel wrote in a messy scrawl a note that said, Gone to Brazil, which sat next to her wallet on the kitchen table. Weird. Well, maybe they were just in a hurry. They left all furniture, their computer, other electronic gadgets, and a full refrigerator, as well as cleaning the house thoroughly, minus a few dirty dishes. Close to this time, Chantel confirmed with her mother that the four were indeed travelling to Brazil. After this, she unfortunately never saw her daughter, granddaughter, Simon, or Tony again. A couple of months go by, and at this point, Jim and Kathy McDougall are starting to become worried regarding the whereabouts of their daughter and granddaughter. They emailed the Australian consulate in Brazil to investigate. What they eventually found out was shocking, to say the least. Security footage from the airport showed that Chantel had never actually left Australia. Jim and Kathy promptly reported Chantel and Leela as missing. Family of Tony Popic reported him missing soon after stating it was uncharacteristic of him to not be in contact for this long. An investigation was launched, and certain details were revealed during the course. Firstly, in the months prior to July, while Jim and Kathy McDougall were visiting the family's rental home in Nenep, a passport was delivered for Leela. Simon acted oddly, quickly snatching it away from view and simply not talking about it. During the same time, Kathy reported that mysterious callers had visited the house. She believes that these people may have something to do with the disappearances. It was also found that on July 13th, 2007, Chantel had sold her car in Bustleton for $4,000 and was seen entering a waiting vehicle afterwards. None of the group's bank accounts have been touched since their disappearance. On July 14, Carolyn French purchased two long-haired Dushans from Chantel, reporting that Chantel was visibly in a hurry to sell the dogs. Soon after, Miss French said she received an anonymous phone call from a woman who aggressively questioned her about the nature of her relationship with Chantel McDougall. As if this wasn't weird enough, another detail was later discovered by police. 
Simon Cadwell was the leader of a New Age Judgment Day prophesizing cult called the Truth Fellowship. What's more is that Simon Cadwell wasn't his real name. He was actually Gary Felton. Born in England, he worked at a software company in 1986. He stole Simon Cadwell's birth certificate and obtained a UK passport in that name to travel to Australia. Simon was an associate of Gary's at the time. After doing some travelling, Gary published several books including The New Call, Servers of the Divine Plan, and Ray Insights, the writings in which many people believed to be stolen from other books. The cult believed that the Earth had arrived at the end of a 75,000 year cycle, and that a new world would be born. These most important occasions present great catalysts for the spiritual advancement of accomplished souls, and some aware persons have more aptly termed such a momentous period, the harvest time, signifying that all those who have learned well the lessons of the physical plane will be harvested into or promoted to a higher, more expansive level of experience. He also created and managed a website called the Truth Fellowship, as well as online chat forums where he and his followers discussed the beliefs of the cult. He was known as Psy by his followers, who were called servers. And it turns out, Gary had some additional strange beliefs. Chantal's mother stated he once asked her unironically what planet she was from, as he genuinely believed some people came from other planets. He also once told her not to take any pictures of him, as the camera would take away his spirit. He was also on antipsychotic medication. Chantal and Tony followed the beliefs of Gary. Chantal proclaimed that Gary would one day change the world with his radical beliefs. I guess it's true that you never really know who people are, or what they do behind closed doors. It was found that two Canadian backpackers, Kirk Halgerson and Alexander Fomanoff, took their own lives not long after meeting Gary. Warren Sunkar ran a backpacker's hostel where the two Canadians stayed. He stated that Kirk and Alexander had similar beliefs to Gary. Did they become one of Gary's followers? Well, around a week after Gary and the others went missing, Fomanoff took her own life. A month later, Helgerson and a woman died from a drug overdose in Massachusetts, USA. Although it is not known whether the deaths of the backpackers were directly related to Gary. Still an uncanny coincidence. Especially since Gary had once discussed with one of his followers a suicide pact he thought of making involving Chantel, another man, and even his daughter, Leela. Perhaps he believed suicide was a way to reach this more expansive level of experience. The server supposedly talked him out of it. Naturally, many favour the theory that the four had partaken in a classic cult murder-suicide. However, other theories surfaced. These range from the four being killed in a plane crash in Brazil around the same time, or that they were simply living in secret somewhere and didn't wish to be disturbed, most likely outside Australia. Why else go through the trouble of obtaining a passport for Leela? Some claim that their living in secrecy would increase book sales and awareness of the cult. But there was a theory put forth by Dr. Chris Geisen, a criminal behavioural psychologist. Geisen believed McDougall, Poppick and Leela were most likely dead, but Gary was still alive and had again assumed a different identity. There is evidence of something like this occurring. For instance, on July 15, 2007, a day after Chantel sold the dogs, a Domino's delivery driver reported that he delivered food to a man matching Poppick's description in a remote section at Kings Park in Perth late at night. On July 16, 2007, two tickets were booked under the name J. Roberts, one for travelling from East Perth to Kalgoorlie and the other for Perth to Northcliffe. Only days earlier, an unused bus ticket was booked under the same name for travelling from Bridgetown to Northcliffe, and had been booked by a call made from the group's Nanup home to Trans West in Australia. A Perth hostel room was also booked under the same name. Notice that two of the tickets booked were destined for Northcliffe. 
What's most disturbing about this is that there were reports by prison workers of a dead flesh smell in bushland around Northcliffe a few months after the disappearances. The workers had also found a woman's t-shirt. A proper investigation was not undertaken until 2015, after bushfires had potentially disturbed any remaining evidence. However, another theory points to the complete opposite of the last, that Gary was the one that somehow died, even before the four were reported missing. One of Gary's internet followers had told Warren Sunkar, the hostel owner from earlier who was associated with the group, that Gary may have committed suicide. So he called Chantel to make sure everything was okay. And her response was, is that what they said? And did not provide any further information regarding the rumour. Even if the rumour was untrue, this indicates that Gary may have been suicidal, which strengthens the murder-suicide theory further. It does make some sense, although I don't know if we'll ever know for sure what happened in that small pocket of the world that made four people vanish for more than a decade. A myriad of questions still remain. Who were the mysterious people that visited that night? Who called Carolyn French? Did their disappearances have anything to do with the Canadian backpackers? With no hard evidence, barely any leads, and only a small paper trail left by a mysterious J. Roberts, it's very likely that this mystery will linger on for some years to come.